guide us on the road, is that we drive with charity, and that we, uh, that, it, that uh, Holy Trinity inspire us as we reflect on our Lord's Word and, and our uh, commitment to our Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. You know, whenever I see them doing that, I'm never sure if they're being religious or if they want me to steal third. Let's do this. Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. Before we begin, a few things about today's video. First, I have to apologize about the sound. My options were either to keep the original, which sounded like being inside an airplane only louder, or to run it through a noise filter and get the occasional squelchy sound. I opted for the latter. Second, what is it with these people in filming in their cars? Blasted car theists? And vertical video too? That crime against nature? Buddy. You takes your phone, you times it like this. Seriously, stop that. I've been reflecting on, all weekend, I've been reflecting on, uh, you know, belief in God and, you know, atheists. Specifically how a lot of, if not all, atheists will say um, that, you know, there's no proof for the existence of God or science, specifically science and how science um, has not proven that God exists. Okay, hold it right there, buddy. You are in violation of the laws of grammar. Proven is an adjective. It describes something that is tried and true, reliable, like a proven friend or ally. Proved is a verb, past tense, and it describes something which has been shown to be so through investigation and testing. I'm going to let you off with a warning, but it's time to start cracking down on that nonsense. You know, a lot of people um, you know, base their belief on what science says. If science can't prove it, then it does you know, exist. Um, Science doesn't say anything. Science is a method, a procedure for discovering what is so through investigation, reason, and testing. Unlike religion, science is not set in stone. Scientists recognize the possibility that they may be wrong and that the method for discovering what is so may be wrong. And if they're good scientists, they embrace these discoveries in order to better understand the universe by using better methods. This is in sharp contrast to religion, where religious people tend to dig in their heels and resist as hard as they can when their beliefs are shown to be flawed. Technically, science doesn't prove anything. It just shows us what is most likely so based on what we can show. Religion claims to have truth despite not being able to show it, embracing faith instead of facts. Here's what I would ask. So if, if somebody tells me or if this atheist says, well, no, you know, I don't believe in God, you know, science uh, doesn't prove it it hasn't proven it. If science could prove the existence of God, would you believe in God? That's the first question I would ask. Would I believe in God? That question is a bit loaded. Instead, let's say that I would accept the fact of God's existence, just to detach my position from the implied baggage, like whether I'd accept that God's dogma. That's a separate issue. Incidentally, this guy has a lot of pauses, which I think I'm going to start cutting out. As usual, link in the description for the sake of integrity if anybody wants to see whether I've been dishonest in my edits. If the atheist said, oh yes, absolutely, then okay, great. That's... Conversation's over, I guess. It really isn't. As I said, now we're down to what it means that God is real. First of all, who says that the proved God will be yours? And if it isn't, will you stop being a Christian and embrace this other God? And if it is your God, why should I accept him? Based on your holy book, your God is a dick, and I'd go looking for the magic ring or flaming sword that could kill the fucker. If you prove God is real, all your work is still ahead of you. If the person said, no, I would question that person and say, well, then do you believe in science? Because if your belief in God hinges on science proving or discovering, if you will, conclusive existence of God, yet that person says, well, no, I, I, I would ask that person, well, then do you 
truly believe in science. Given that the descriptions of God usually involve the supernatural, for which we have exactly zero proved examples, if science allegedly proved a God's existence, I'd be more likely to think that the science is wrong and would want a thorough investigation. When something turns on its head absolutely everything we've been able to show up to that point, my brain is gonna go into check and make sure gear. You, you know, the person that says, uh, you know, I won't believe until it's proven by science or something, I would say, well, okay, how do you know for sure that science proves anything? In other words, you person have the scientific knowledge read a scientific study and understand. Again, if you really want to get technical, science doesn't prove. It just shows what is most likely so. If you insist on absolute proof, if you insist on being 100% certain, what happens when something you thought was so, 100% certain is the case, turns out to be false? There are a lot of qualities in this universe in which I have 99.9, .9, with an infinite number of nines after that decimal place, percent certainty. But it will never reach 100. I will always leave open that chance that I could be wrong. And that, I think, is the difference between atheists and theists. Believers are uncomfortable with uncertainty and claim to be certain about many things, even if, deep down, they know they're not. Take a science theory, like the theory of relativity or something. You read that and understand it and say, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that proves it. Yep, that, that, uh, that does it for me. Well, yes and no. Unlike those involved in religion, scientists don't just make declarations. They study, they test, they submit their findings for review, have their work tested by others. If something is published in a peer-reviewed journal, I can be fairly certain that it has gone through such rigorous cross-examination and isn't just someone making assertions out of nowhere. So either there is a great big scientific conspiracy, or what's published is fairly reliable. And let's suppose it's not. The findings are still out there. If I was of a mind, I could do the testing. I could do the checking and making sure. I don't have to blindly trust what I read. So would I accept what I've read? Yeah, I probably would, even if I didn't understand it myself, even if I haven't done the lab work myself. And if they're wrong and bullshitting, someone won't let them get away with it. Okay, this guy says a lot more, but it's mostly the same, and accusing atheists of having faith, blah, blah, blah. Been there, done that. And the thing is, the longer I made this video, the more I hated it. Seriously, I'm really not proud of this one. Mostly it's the sound. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people have already clicked away because of it. I should have chosen a better video for a response, but this one just made me grouchy. I covered the parts I felt were important. I got to do the grammar police thing. People using proven where proved is the right word has really been getting under my skin lately. And I think this is where I'm gonna stop. Before I go, someone sent me another present. If you don't recognize this, it's the plate from the evil car in Knight Rider. It'll go up on my wall with all the others in my collection. There's no note, so I don't know who to thank, but I'm giving thanks anyway. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please, think. Attention citizens, failure to contribute will result in suspended oxygen privileges. Attention citizens, failure to contribute will result in suspended oxygen privileges. Attention citizens. You've got two choices. You can rate this video and share it everywhere across social media, or I can send my minions after you. Choose wisely.